Chairman, sir, I rise to move that bill further to amend the Companies Act 2013, as passed by the Lok Sabha, be taken into consideration. Okay. Do you want to say something? Otherwise, I will call. Yeah, yes, I would yeah. like okay. to say something. So, Honorable Chairman, sir, I rise to initiate the discussion on the motion for consideration and passing of the Companies Amendment Bill 2017 as passed by the Lok Sabha. Sir, Companies Amendment Act 2013 was notified on 29th of August 2013 and it introduced the significant changes and inter alia it provides the disclosure to stakeholders and the provision regarding accountability of directors, auditors and key manager persons and also investor protection and corporate governance. All these sections of the Act of 2013, Companies Amendment, Companies Act of 2013 have already been enforced except two sections fully, that is section 132 and section 465. And partially section 2, subclause 67, 9 and section 230, Subclause 11 and 12. And along with this, at the time of enforcement of the Companies Act 2013, the rules have already been enacted. Sir, when at the time this, when this Act of 2013 was there, some difficulties were realized with respect to the initial experience and working of the Act of 2013. And to address those difficulties, the Companies Amendment Act 2015 was introduced in the Lok Sabha and was passed by the, both the houses. But at the time of passing that Act of 2015, the members of the Rajya Sabha requested the government that some more amendments are required because to address the difficulties which the companies are facing. So keeping in view this fact, the government constituted the companies uh, Law Committee, and that was chaired by the Secretary, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, and with a view to examine the need for further amendment, and extensive consultation was held by the committee, and after that extensive consultation, report was submitted to the government on 1st of December 2016, and in pursuance to that, incorporating all the suggestions and recommendations made by the uh, Companies Law Committee, the Bill 2000 the Companies Amendment Bill 2016 was introduced in the Lok Sabha on the basis of the recommendations of the Companies Amendment Bill 2016. And in this connection, the amendment of 87 sections were there. And this bill was when introduced in the Lok Sabha on 16th of March 2016. The, it was referred to Parliament Standing Committee on Finance with a request to examine and report with respect to the, this bill. The report was submitted by the Parliament Standing Committee on Finance on 7th of December 2016 before the both, both Houses of Parliament. And I extend my thanks to chairmen and members of the committee who devoted considerable time to prepare this report and some recommendations were made. And most of the recommendations have already been incorporated by way of official amendments. And thereafter, the bill was passed by the Lok Sabha, including the official amendments, and some more sections were incorporated, and by that process, the 93 sections were taken into consideration, and the Lok Sabha passed this bill, along with official amendment on 27th of July 2017, and it was passed as Companies Amendment Bill 2017. Chairman, sir, I would like to highlight some of the objective behind amending the Companies Act 2013. Because in 2013 Act, the present bill is there, where some objectives are there. One of the major objectives is with respect to the compliance requirement and to relax the stringent provisions under the Act of 2013 and to facilitate ease of doing business and to harmonization of accounting standards and other legislations. And it is also realized that some mistakes are there 
some inconsistency in the act is there with respect to the various provisions of the act and the definition clause. Therefore, the definitions were also harmonized, keeping in view the other provisions of the act and as well as keeping in view the direction of the Supreme Court with respect to the NCLT and NCLAT qualifications and selection of the members. Sir, I would also like to point out that all these objectives are being uh, achieved without diluting the core strengths of the act. Sir, I would also like to give examples of these uh, key features in the bill. First is to balance the competing interests of various stakeholders that has also been taken into consideration and the stringent actions have been provided in the bill for fraudulent conduct of business and default of public departments. Besides this, greater transparency has also been provided to prevent money laundering. Sir, recently we have seen that the misuse of cell companies, therefore the restriction regarding layers of subsidies have already been retained. Earlier the number of the, uh, the layers were there and those the, the, the cell companies were, have been used as a conduit for money laundering and all this. So the restrictions have been already been retained, which is there in the Act of 2013. Then the, some of the, it has also been realized that to raise the finance, so the companies have been permitted and make entitled to provide the loan to the entities, raising, imposing some conditions. Sir, the, for the small and one-man companies, some relaxations have been granted with respect to the procedures and penalties. Not only with respect to the small companies, but relaxations with respect to procedural and technicalities has also been granted for the big companies. So the provision was also there for managerial remuneration, so the central government approval. Earlier we used to obtain the central government ap approval that has also been dispensed with, and the various definitions under the definition clause were redefined, removing ambiguity and inconsistencies in respect to the definition, in respect to the various provisions of the Act, and as well as harmonizing with the SEBI and RBI Act also. Sir, the foreign companies have also been exempted who were having insignificant transactions through electronic mode with respect to registry and the compliance. Sir, the appointment of the auditor, because earlier the appointment for the appointment of the auditor, the every year rectification is required. So that amount to removal of the auditor and it creates a lot of inconsistency with respect to the other provisions of the Act. Therefore, that has also been removed and dispensed with. <coughs> Some clarity was also required with respect to uh, limited life and partnership to convert into a company. So that clarity has also been provided. Sir, for appeals, because the provision of appeal has also been provided in case of national financial reporting authority to national company law appellate tribunal under section 132, making suitable amendment under the act section 132. Sir, about 70 years earlier, the provisions were not there, but now the relaxation has been provided that even a person who has achieved uh, above the 70 years of age, he can be appointed on the post of managing director, whole time director, and manager with certain conditions. Sir, with these key amendments in Australia as proposed in the bill, I request August House to consider and pass the bill.